Like emotionally, they don't care. Yeah. You get what I mean? And hey, imagine if I could just wear this from here. <gasps> oh my god! Really? <gasps> oh my god! Hello everyone, welcome back to the Oat Milk Lesbians. Um, we're doing another episode of Hotline today. I shouldn't have talked about all those stuff because now I feel depressed. No, I feel really. I, feel I have to very, hide myself up. I feel very disturbed right now. Yeah, we just had a very disturbing conversation about earlier. About men. Why is it always about men? <laughs> it's about men, it's about <laughs> harassment, it's about how men don't care. Not us going on a tangent. About how men don't care about people. They just don't care about people. And yeah, it's, it's like. It's a depressing conversation. And then again, also, this conversation started off while we were doing our Twitch stream already. La. And also, because the whole of like the past weekend, I have been also talking to Faye about how much I hate men, and then everybody also kind of just hates men. And so, we had a lot of conversations regarding hating men. And I was also talking about it on my live, and I got banned because yeah. I said I hate men. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I just feel like men have just been. You know, I wish I could block them out so they don't affect. Oh my god, I know. Hi, Chris. I, I want to live in a world without men. Me too. If I'm ever reincarnated, reincarnate me in a fucking universe where men don't exist. Yeah, the one when Wonder Woman, she was born on an island with all women. Oh my god, yes. Only women, and they're all like buff, and they all fight. Shit. I want to be reincarnated into a world where there's no white people, no men, and no rich people. I think. You would come across more like not more problems, but problems that you would not come across in this world. It's okay, I don't mind. I would be quite interested to know what kind of problems, uh, would come about in a world without men, in a world without rich people, in a world without white people. I'm very interested. I'm interested. Too. I feel like, okay, I feel like if history, right, an entire history has no white people, perhaps there wouldn't be colorism. Because initially, I was thinking, right, if there was a world without white people and it was just women of color, right, mm -hmm. I would think I would have thought the white, the lighter skin women, would be discriminatory towards the darker skin women. But then again, maybe that wouldn't happen if white people were never there in the first place. Because this whole thing started because of white people. Yeah, they are the ones that went around colonizing other people. I mean, colonizing happened in other empires as well, but it is more relevant in today's context because. Of how recent the colonization by white people has been happening, okay, just to make it very clear. But yes, currently I want to be in a world without, without issues like this. Yes, this is depressing. It's just straight up depressing. I want to be in a world where everybody's a lesbian. Okay, we're gonna get into it. Okay. Okay. Let's start. Um, who's reading? Okay, I can read. Am I not good enough? The relationship happened a very long time ago, like maybe 10 years ago, but I still have these lingering feelings. These feelings come and go, by the way. It all started when we entered secondary school. She always claims me as a best friend. She would praise me for the things I do or anything I like. For information, I have a very boyish hobby, like watching football, collecting toy models, etc. She even asked me at times, why do I act so boyish? Un uh, while in my case, I feel like normal, la, like the way I act that I am. She would ask me to hang out at her house during weekends until one day we were doing revisions and homework. She suddenly sat on my lap and caressed my back. Wow. Mm. Proceeded to ask me if she can kiss me on the cheek. Wow. Oh. Back then, we were 13 years old, thank god! Um, I didn't think much and agree with it. That's how everything started, from kissing on the cheek to French kissing. Uh -uh. On, again, next time, still the same answer. Suddenly, the, suddenly I have the urge to have sex! <laughs> uh, suddenly! Suddenly! I this ask us all the time, uh, we're making our sound. And suddenly, I have the urge to have sex. I asked her if I can touch her pussy. She refused it! <laughs> what? You're 13! Go fucking do your homework! I tried asking her again next time. Still the same answer. The kissing game went on for 3 months. Okay, first of all, why are you 13 years old and then you suddenly want to have sex? I'm so sorry, you shouldn't have sex until you're 16 years old. I think 18. Actually, 18 is a better number. Mm -hmm. Eventually, both of us agreed to break up for the sake of focusing on studies. Good! Uh, 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 uh. After the breakup, we became the worst enemies. So we went from lovers to enemies. Yeah. We ended up not talking 
<laughs> Imagine it's so funny, I ask him, hey, can I touch your pussy? And then suddenly you're like, enemies. <laughs> we ended up not talking to each other at all. We finally finished school and parted ways. As I entered uni, there's this part of me that I still care for her even if we didn't talk or meet. So what I did is stalk her IG. Okay. I found out she dated a butch. She even posted a video saying her now girlfriend is the first girl she slept with. My question is now, why would she have slept with her instead of me? Am I not good enough? No. You, you were 13! <laughs> you were 13 years old, okay? That's the easy answer! Maybe I need to see a therapist. Sorry for the messy plot since I have to skip and cut short some backstory. This is my genuine experience. Yeah, it's not that you're not good enough. You, you guys, were just 13 yes, years old. The two of you were just 13. Like, I think if I was 13 years old and somebody asked me if they want to touch my pussy after they kiss me, right? I'll be like, hell no. Yeah, I I'll be, be so scared. Awkward. Yeah, I'd be scared as hell too. No, yeah, I, I would be scared. So perhaps you are the problem here. Yeah, but then again, she sat on your lap also, I guess. But then, hard to say also. No, when you are, okay, let me just break it down for you what happened, okay? When you're young, you want attention, but you don't want sex. So that's exactly what's happening here right now. You, she wanted the attention from you, hence all the teasing and everything, and she got the attention from you, but sex is where she draws the line at. So that's why she didn't have sex with you, not because you were not good enough. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you should still see a therapist for like, you know, if you want to clarify more things, but I don't think you need to see a therapist I because think, the answer no, is quite I obvious. I think you need to see a therapist because the fact is you, 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 you think you are not good enough and that's why you think you are not good enough. That's why she didn't let you touch her pussy. So if this is enough for you to think that you are not good enough, you probably think you're not good enough. Like what other thing that can happen in your life will make you think that you're not good enough? Like, so still go see a therapist. Lah. It doesn't have to be about this issue like, oh, this girl don't let me touch her pussy so I'm not good enough. <laughs> You I'm just, sorry, this is hilarious. <laughs> just go and see a therapist and gain some self confidence and self worth. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I feel so bad no. for laughing. But it's actually really funny. Yeah, imagine, imagine like. Can I touch your pussy? Right. And then I say no. And then the other person is like. Am I not good enough? Is there something wrong with No! Me? Nothing happened. Okay, <sighs> you are just young, okay? Like. I, I, I feel like this has. It's. She don't let me touch a pussy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so no. funny. Yeah, go see a therapist, go see a therapist. Okay? okay, that's it. This is a very easy thing to answer. This is a long ass one. Okay, like, it's not that long. Okay. But there's a lot of caps lock. La. Yes, a lot of caps What lock. do you have to say that's so shouty? Hi, Fate. Oh my god, this is very hard to read. Wait, this is not the ergonomic. Wait, you, you want to like lower the. I can't lower the chair. Oh, it's the lowest ah. And also I think because, oh, this is the lowest. But every time okay. I try to lower the chair, I have to bounce on the chair. Hi, I'm gonna put this on my lap. Fuck this shit. Hi, Faye and Zoe. Hey. I'm a 21-year-old lesbian in university and I generally have a hard time relating to other queer people my age today. I've been in Frank 2021 20, is, you're born in 2003. I have been in friend groups before where most where my most recent one was where it was a big group of majority queer folk in a neighbouring university in Subang. <laughs> in record, Taylor's by the way, I hate them so much, I'm from Sunway. Okay, it's as if Sunway is better than Taylor's. Let's not. No. I cut myself off from them recently because I realised I wasn't treated right as a friend. Our needs and priorities are different and I find it hard to relate to them due to our social economic standings. I recently listened to episode 38 of your podcast and I found it so fucking relatable and it hit home way too hard. What's episode 38? Wait. I think it's Losing Friends. Oh, okay. Is it? Is it? Wait, wait, wait no, I don't think so. Okay, continue reading. Uh, wait, uh, let me just double check the mic. I am always so fucking paranoid with the mic. Okay. I find it not just as a sapphic issue in the community in KL. Oh, it's the uh, popularity contest one. Oh. I find it not just as a sapphic issue in the community in KL, but as LGBTQ plus issue as a whole. I've been on hermit mode ever since cutting myself off from them because of how my mental health has been affected being associated with them before. Don't worry, same. I seriously hate how most of the queer community nowadays don't fucking know the importance of and history of being queer. How it is political and how they just use their queerness as an aesthetic. Correct! Correct! Oh my god! My friends back then would complain about their friends being posers and biphobic as lesbians and gay men, even though they are just the same. They're all posers relishing in their peak high school years who refuse to acknowledge adulthood, reality, and the struggles it brings. Like, why bring high school mentality into fucking university slash corporate working world 
make it make sense. This is all in caps lock, by the way. Like Agreed. if you peaked at 16 and still act the same at 23, it's so fucking cringy and embarrassing. Also, most LGBTQ plus people I do befriend unfortunately tend to be fake as fuck, caps locker. Uh. Especially men, caps locker. Uh. Gay or straight, they are really just the same. Ah, uh, another one uh, talking about men. Uh. Gay or straight, they are really just the same. As I get older, it's harder to make friends, especially good queer friends. I wish it was easier to make friends with like-minded people, but I know now it's better to stick with few friends who reciprocate your energy and effort than be associated with a huge group or know a lot of people just for the sake of social currency and status. Correct. Gotta give it to you. In bracket, a hard pill to swallow as a recovering people pleaser. As older lesbians, do things get better as you get old? We're not that old. Uh. Yeah, we're not that old, dude. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're just like 98 and 99. Yeah, we're not older lesbians. We're probably slightly older, but we're not that old. I don't even think we're that experienced, I feel. No, how many years? I only have four years in lesbianism. I started in 2019. I started dating women in 2019, but I didn't really identify as a lesbian until 2021. Same. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, as older lesbians, do things get better as you get older? Yes, it does. Um, because we're celibate. Yeah. I feel hopeless, Lamau. I think honestly, wait, let me just finish reading everything. P.S. I've been streaming y'all since the start of your podcast and it's been so comforting listening to y'all stories in the middle of me doing work on public transport, commuting, or just vibing out to at home. Thank you so much for all you do and I hope you guys are doing well. We'll continue streaming till I die and even then I'd be supporting Beyond the Grave. Ha ha ha. That's Thanks. So sweet. That's so sweet. Okay. Um, in regards to if it gets better when you get older, I don't know, man. I just feel like Faye and I have talked about it so many fucking times, right? Uh, like so many fucking so times. So many times. We are so much happier. Hey, when did you submit this that you were able to watch episode 38? You submitted in May. Oh. oh. Oh my god. It's quite a while back. Yeah. But yeah, if you have been watching like the recent episodes, Faye and I are extremely, like so much happier. So, so, so much happier. It does get better, I think, because like for us, we learn to, to enjoy life as is and not fixate on people and not fixate on the need for a relationship and all these kind of things. Like, we find joy in what we have, you know? Yeah. That's pretty much it. I would say the difference is not really with age lies, just more of like perspective. Yeah, perspective, which is something that you seem to already have. So yeah. it will definitely get better for you if you continue on with your perspective. I mean, I think like props to you though, because you're 21 and in university and you already have this perspective of things, right? I think it's yeah. like like props to you because you're like you're like actually acknowledging how fake people are, not well, yeah, how fake people are and like staying away from you know, and you are not like buying into this whole popularity contesting as a 21 year old in university, especially surrounded by people who are like that, right? Yeah. No, that's actually so good. Yeah. When I was 21, I was insane. When, yeah, like, you're doing so much better than me. Like, I gotta give it to you. Yeah, when I was 21, I was significantly seeking external validation without even fucking knowing it, to be very honest. And I was very traumatized. So, I mean, not to say that you're not traumatized, I'm just saying that you have the mentality of us when we were not 21, older than 21. So I think you're doing really well. Yeah, I would say this perspective only came in for me in like the recent year. Me too. And I was like 25. Me too. So you are um, like, you yeah. were 24. Yeah. So you, you are like three, four years ahead of us for doing yeah. this. So yeah. just keep it up. I think props to you. Oh my God. Yeah. This is good. I love this. Okay, I'm going to read this and I'm going to read the other one because this is damn short. How long does lesbian sex typically last? Is it unhealthy for it to be hours long? No. Okay. You're doing a good job. Yes, yes, you're doing a good job. But also when it comes to it being unhealthy for it to be hours long, I also feel like um, it's only unhealthy if it's getting in the way of your daily life. Like if like, let's say you have a job and then you're like not going to work because you're having hours long of sex then yeah it's unhealthy <laughs> or for example you have work at nine o'clock on the next day and you have to wake up at seven o'clock to get to work by nine o'clock then you're actually having sex from 12 o'clock to five o'clock in the morning that's when it becomes unhealthy but other than that if it's not getting in the way of your lives then no it's not unhealthy yeah just proper time management is mm -hmm. is enough time management title me and my girlfriend have been dating for a little longer than a year and we still have not kids huh girlfriend huh it's not it's not situationship, okay. Okay, at least that's better lah. 
No, that's not better because if you don't kiss your situation ship, then okay lah. But if you don't kiss your girlfriend, then what's the problem? But at least it's better than you are in a situation ship and you're meeting the parents and there's no label. Okay, whatever, we'll get into it later. Okay, Context. Before I tell this story, I just want to tell you guys how much I love your videos and it's been really super helpful for me to hear other people's queer experiences as well as yours. It makes me feel not so alone because being queer can feel so isolating sometimes. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, for now the story lol. So basically, I liked my girlfriend for a year before we started dating but was too scared to confess to her because I didn't know if she felt the same way. Uh, bracket never beating the bottom allegations so your bottom eventually i did ask her to be my girlfriend and she obviously said yes great for you however even when we were dating she always had trouble opening up to me and i've noticed that she's tried to toughen up on multiple occasions out of the fear of being vulnerable later in our relationship i started to truly learn how homophobic her parents were bracket mm -hmm. her parents pulled her sister who also happens to be a lesbian out oh. of school because they found out that she was dating a girl oh okay that's fucked up they are also extremely religious bracket they are christians and made me go to church with her with her when i was sleeping over at her house when my parents were out of town close bracket because of this, she's always been wary of the opinions of others and have been extremely fearful of her parents ever finding out that we were dating. We barely ever displayed PDA in public as well as in private due to her fears and me of not wanting to make her uncomfortable. Unfortunately, her mom ended up finding out that we were dating 8 months in because she went through her phone during our winter break. And I assumed her mom knew because she was mes wasn't messaging me for more than a week which made me spiral and think that I would never see her again. Eventually, the break ended and we went back to school and was relieved to see her again. We both, we both bonded o over our fears thinking we were never going to see each other again. I'm glad we talked about it since I know it's hard for her to open up and I'm happy she was able to feel safe with me. As we continued dating, we weren't able to go out on dates anymore because her mom, of her mom knowing about us, it makes it really hard for us to be in a relationship. I've always wanted to be more intimate with her from the moment I started liking her, and sometimes I feel like we are in more of a friendship <laughs> than in a relationship. Okay. Also, I forgot to mention, but I'm her first sapphic relationship, and she's never kissed anyone before, and I've never been the one to initiate to initiate in my past relationships bracket again definitely not beating the bottom allegations well i think it's time to switch uh, switch orientations <laughs> i've also recently opened about wanting to be more intimate to her and she told me that she felt the same way and has even suggested going out after school but she's always had issues with setting concrete dates or at least trying to be realistic even when we're able to go on dates. I don't blame her at all for the situation and I truly understand and feel for her but I can't help but feel friend zone in this relationship <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> we also don't really call or FaceTime because she lives with her parents and is scared, scared of them overhearing our conversations so we can really only date during school which just doesn't feel like enough time to talk not to mention she doesn't really like to talk about herself which is her interest how her day has been etc which makes me feel distant from her our summer break is quickly approaching and we most likely won't be able to go out together which makes me question about how long our relationship will last thank you for listening to my story and if you guys have any advice on how i can be more intimate and feel closer to how my partner please let me know there's a lot there's, to unpack here um okay so this is on her well, it's not really on her. I feel like she needs to figure stuff out like with her family also. But then again, it's also not really her fault because her family is like that. I, I feel like that whole thing needs to be settled though. If yeah. you want to be more intimate with her. Wait, can I say something? I feel like you can kiss at other places, right? Because you're not having sex. Sex is different. You need a room for mm. that. But kissing wise, even just a pack and everything, I think you can just do it like like somewhere else right okay Did you I, I don't know ask your her yeah have you tried asking her before it sounds like you have a difficulty asking no because i'm wondering how you okay if you haven't had sex one year in that was understandable but uh. kissing though uh. kissing without one year in you are like each other's partners and you haven't kissed that's a bit much right yeah have yeah. you ever gone one year in a relationship with a person without kissing them? I mean, no lah. Exactly. I haven't, I've, yeah, my relationship, oh, I kissed before the relationship start one. Well, 
I mean, okay, it's fine if you want to kiss when you are in relationship only. But I feel like I mean, I don't know your girlfriend, and I I don't know more context to this lah. But if you're telling me that you haven't kissed like after one year being in a relationship, and also maybe you're in school lah. Maybe it's different. Maybe you're thirteen years old. So I I have no idea about that, right? But I think that um, I think that is something that your girlfriend. Needs to figure out also lah because maybe you know sometimes right when people they have a lot of like internalized homophobia or like they have issues yep, happening correct. in their house, it will really get in the way of their intimacy with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something that um, you can obviously work through with her, but she definitely needs to work yes. through that. Yes, yeah, she needs to figure it out lah. I think I feel like you can do as much as you can, but she doesn't figure it out. Like then no point lah. Yeah, because okay, not kissing is one thing, right? But If she doesn't figure it out, right, it can also show up in sex, though. Like if you guys start having sex, like it can show up in different ways. I'm not too sure how, but I just feel like that's usually the case. If someone doesn't resolve their issues with like internalized homophobia or like the parents and fear and everything in general, um, yeah, it can kind of show up in sex, like especially. I'm not too sure about your girlfriend, but if she also has difficulties accepting herself. That could also surface in your sex lives,、mm. or just any physical intimacy. Yeah, I, I agree with that, lah. Honestly, I feel like yeah, this is just a thing for her to figure out. Oh, you can read this. Yeah, yeah. The next one, the next submission is very, very short. Mental health. Is it the same? I don't know.、Okay. Oh, it it is the same. Mental health issues of my breakup of eight years relationship. Okay, thank、okay. you so much for existing. Love listening to your podcast and gave me a lot of input. Today I'm writing here is because I had a heartbreaking breakup with my eight years girlfriend. Eight years is not long and it's not short, and to a stage that we will get married. Sally recently we broke up because she cheated on me with another girl that I know and I am very close to. I feel angry and disgusted over this. A friend who is very close to me take away my love of my life. I admit I am at wrong. I am wrong at times. I always been thinking true love exists, but no. I really feel sad because my ex can brush this eight years relationship and forget all memories. How can this happen? What should I do? At this point, I'm giving up love and disappointed. What should I do after this traumatic breakup? I even committed suicide a few times, and she don't even care about my death. What? Until I have to visit psychiatrist and take sleeping pills to sleep. She makes my depression became worse, and this anxiety is so terrible. What should I do, girls? How can I overcome this? Okay. Okay, I honestly think right when you use the term "my close friend took away the love of my life," that just means that person is not the love of your life because the love of your life would not fucking cheat on you. Yeah. And a true friend would not be also the reason that your partner cheats on you. In fact, if your partner fucking cheats on you, if your partner even tried to approach your close friend, a true close friend would have been like hell nah, and then would tell you about it. Right? These two people. Are not your true friends? It's not the love of your life. But I'm so fucking sorry that happened to you. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Eight years is a long time to invest in someone in a relationship. Yeah, it it must feel like shit. And I can only imagine like you, almost spend like so much of your life with this person. Yeah, for them to just throw it up and just cheat on you. Yeah, I I'm so sorry that happened to you. I don't know if what I just said would actually help you, but I feel like. You know, if you're not in the right headspace to listen to that, perhaps you can grieve a little bit first and then come back to it. It come back to this thought when you're a little bit better, when you don't feel as sad. You mentioned here that she doesn't care about your death and all, right? I feel like you should just cut her off completely、mm. because it sounds like you are still keeping in touch with her,、mm-hmm. and probably you have communicated about your attempts to unalive yourself、mm-hmm. to her. But I think. What's best is for you to just cut off her and this friend lah,、mm. like moving forward. Because when you when you like let's say lah, like you you do anything and you have communicated to this person and all that that you this is what happened to you and you can feel like she doesn't care about you.、Mm. I feel like you can't keep doing that and expect her to react differently because、mm. she's not. You know, maybe the next time you tell her you have anxiety or you have a panic attack, I'm not. I'm not saying that I wish this on you or anything, but I'm just saying that like you can continuously communicate like all these things that are happening. But if you keep receiving this and you keep 
um, getting the reaction that solidifies that she does not care about you anymore is going to hurt you even more. So I think yeah. it's best to just cut her off completely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. But so sorry that that happened. It's really not okay. Damn, why are all these so short? Is it just me? Yeah, it's damn short. Four years together with the girlfriend. Three years of no intimacy. Hey, wait. Today's theme is... Not having sex with my girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> Zero sex. She makes... She never make a move first. Not even French kiss. When I asked why I always feel unwanted for these three freaking years, she said she just tired. I don't know, it really hurts me. It's true that sex is not everything, but it's just weird when your partner never be honest about it. It's so sad. You know there's a term for this. I don't know whether this is the same thing as to what you're going through. I don't know if you had sex for the first year, but maybe it's the lesbian bad death. Lesbian what? Lesbian bad death. It's why? like a term where like, when lesbians enter into like a long relationship, they stop having sex. But I don't believe this because I feel like lesbians are fucking horny. Yeah, I mean... But it's I a term lah. I suppose, but at the same time, they can be bored of the person and then just stop having sex. I don't understand why you That's stay... That's what happened to me. Anyway. With who? Which one? The the recent one. The polyamorous one. Ah. Oh, right. We stopped. We stopped having sex. I thought, I thought you guys broke up. You still... Sex. No, no. That's why I told you because we broke up in um, July. Okay. I told that's why I told you we stopped having sex in March, and oh. even then it was very rare already. It was very rare already. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it does happen. Lesbian bad death. Yeah, it does happen. But you will never have lesbian bad death with the love of your life. Yes, I agree. Just saying. I agree. You'll be having sex until you are in the grave, and I you're in the grave, and you're still having sex. Yes. I agree. So, um, um, more of the story is uh, just break up. Uh. I, yeah, I mean, it sucks that your partner is not honest about it, but like, for me, like, how I see it is that I, I believe you should talk things through, yes. but if three years she still don't want to be honest with you, I'll break up already. Yeah. Like, legit. If someone is wasting your time for three years and they're not. And they can't even tell you that they don't want to have sex or like don't desire you or whatever. Mm. Okay, I'm not too sure what your partner is going through. Like, because, okay, I'm not saying that this is happening to your partner or anything, but sometimes some people, they avoid intimacy abruptly. It could be due to unspoken sexual harassment or mm -hmm. assault, that's true, that's which true. I'm, not, I'm trying to not uh, rule out because that happens and that has happened in a previous entry that we've read before, remember? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Where yeah. like they were having issues with intimacy because yes. of uh, sexual harassment. Mm. So maybe that could be an issue. Maybe it's something you can talk about with your partner and maybe it has impacted your partner so much that they could not bring it up to you even for three years. Um, um. But let's say la, if that wasn't the case, right, and they just simply did not want to have sex with you or do not desire you, I would highly recommend to just break up. Yeah, yeah. but absolutely, I think if you want to go down that route, Whatever decision you choose to make, just have a conversation first lah. Because mm -hmm. don't want to rule out the first thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. some people, they are just like, you know, they are just too scared to tell you. Yeah. Like, that they just not feeling sexual anymore or yeah. whatever, or they don't desire you. I think it's in the best interest for both parties to move on. But if they are having some sexual intimacy issues that is unrelated to you, then I think it could help to just work things through together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agree. Sorry. Do I read the next one? Yes. Hi, I'm a closeted trans girly with no control over my appearance and such. And so I have absolutely zero way to signal to people that I'm not a straight guy. How does someone like me find love and intimacy and people to trust, send help? Damn. I feel like this is out of my ability to say anything about. Because I don't... I don't know what it's like. But I mean, I'm sure that like, people that you find who are, people whom you can trust, will be people who would accept this part of you, right? I feel like, but I understand also very hard, uh, what if you come out to a person and then you get outed and all of that and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's tough, it's tough. You can test the waters the way I did with my friend. Uh, my friend Angelie, the one where I was like, you know my friend, she's a lesbian, uh, she's bisexual, you know, and I don't, I'm not really for it. And da, 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 da. I want to know what you think and what you think I should tell her. But perhaps you don't have to say like you're not for it. You just say that like your friend is, you know, um, a trans girly and whatever, right? What do you think about it, you know? Because I don't know how to react. Perhaps you can try that to see if like that person is someone that you can trust. 
Yeah. yeah. Or you could just go to Sapphic events. Then everyone knows you're Sapphic. Mm. So like, you know like those Sapphic events that have like, uh, it's specifically for like, um, Sapphic dating, Sapphic kind of events. But I don't know if this person is Sapphic though. Trans girly. Trans girl? Sapphic? Oh, oh yeah, oh. sorry. Assumed your sexuality. So sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, queer yeah. events also. Queer events also. Yeah, there's trans women there who date men, who date women and all of that. You can try going for that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What brings me here today, I'm, I'm done, done dating, dating girls. Same. 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 Same as fuck. I don't know if this happens to other lesbians, but I have really weird comhead dreams that just come out of nowhere and, and leaves me- that's like you. Huh? That's like you. Me? Yeah, I mean, no, you having a dream that you're married to this man and you were like, Oh, oh that man. Yeah, I want to get a and divorce. And leave feeling confused and sad afterward. I keep dreaming about hooking up or getting into relationships with guys. <laughs> so you. Oh, me, I was forced into a marriage with a man. <laughs> Even though I know I'm a lesbian, it might be only because I've only dated guys in the past and have never had a girlfriend before. But it honestly sucks because they are sometimes really detailed and emotional and I honestly get insecure about my sexual orientation. Even though I've literally done everything I could to prove myself that I'm not into guys. Honestly, maybe I should go to therapy or get a girlfriend. Anyways, love your podcast. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sometimes I think that we shouldn't take our dreams too seriously. I agree. I was married to him, but I don't even think about him like... Yeah. At all. In my like, this dude. Yeah. And I was forced into a marriage with him and I have an adopted child with him. Does uh, that mean I'm uh, in love with him? <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't take your dreams too seriously, la, really. Let me give you a very good example. I dream about having sex with women I don't even think about. Yeah. And I am not into those women. Like, mm -hmm. you know, classmates who are like straight friends and all these things. Like, very rarely I dream about people that I like, by the way. And I don't even think about these people at all. It would be like a random person from like five years ago who was like a friend that I just worked with that I wouldn't even think about her sexually at all, by mm -hmm. the way, because I know she's straight mm -hmm. and I would think about us having sex. But of course that doesn't mean I like her, right? Mm. Yeah. Know? So even if you have a sexual dream with a woman, it doesn't mean that you like her. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, I would say, like, with this example, just don't take your dreams too seriously. Correct, correct. So, like, I had a dream recently that Faye told me that she had a crush on somebody's ex. Somebody's <laughs> ex that we knew. And then she was like, ew, ew, why her? Of all people, why her? And it's like, just because I had a dream that Faye told me that she has a crush on someone doesn't mean she has a crush on someone. Yeah, I never even met her before, by the way. Yeah. So I don't even know how she properly looks like. Yeah, correct. I've had so many fucking dreams that did not make any fucking sense whatsoever. It's yeah. fine. Don't take your dreams too seriously. I, I think dreams are just sometimes just... I feel like, okay, you know what? People interpret dreams and everything. And I, I do believe in dream interpretation. But I feel like that one is really is up to you to decide whether your dreams should have a meaning or not. If I decide that me having sex with my classmate was a real thing, then I'm going to go pursue her now already, but I'm not going to do that, obviously, because I want to decide that I don't actually have a crush on my classmate. Mm. So I'm not going to pursue her, mm. you know, because I don't actually like her. And I know that about myself, my conscious self. I don't like her. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think you can do the same for yourself too. You don't like all these random men you have dreams about. Yeah. So, you know, but I mean, if you feel like you should go to therapy, then by all means also. Yes, that. yes. Um, next one, just a 16 year old looking for div uh, for advice. Divorce? What are you supposed to say? Divorce? divorce. <laughs> I, I, I want to say device. Oh. oh my god, okay, is this the. Okay, I don't think this is the same one. Anyway, go read the next one because that one was a bit short. I think we will read this one and call it a day because we need to leave. Alright. Hello. How many minutes has it been? Okay, la, can la. Hello! So, let's just start. Ever since I was young, I just knew that I liked women. I didn't question or deny it at all. I just knew that I was a lesbian. However, I just kept it to myself and never told anyone about it. Let me just That's, that's great. Yeah. Right now, I'm a Form 4 student. Okay, it's the same one. I, right now, I'm a Form 4 student at the Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan, SMK. When I was in Form 3, I was in the second worst class. But when I entered Form 4, I got into Science Stream. Consequently, I was separated from my friends from my old class and I was put into a new environment surrounded with new people whom I've never really interacted with before. Among these new people is a girl whom I will call Shelly. When I first met Shelly, I thought she was a person who had no concern for others' feelings. I found her a little intimidating too, or maybe it's just my social anxiety. IDK, haha. 
But when I got to know her more, I found that she's actually a friendly, kind and nice person. We sit together in any class that requires us to be in a lab. Over the months, I started to low-key have a tiny little crush on her. However, I am not sure if it's a crush or just the thought of being loved by another person. Or both. Perhaps. Just let me burp. Uh. Thank you. Earlier, earlier today, during physics class, we, in bracket me, Shelly, Shelly's best friend and some other girls, were sitting in the lab together. Shelly and her best friend were talking about something and then they asked me if I had a crush. You for do. S- for some reason, my dumbass said yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the conversation goes with them trying to guess who it was. It was really funny for me because my crush was trying to guess who my crush was. <laughs> that is so cute. I'm sorry. That's so cute. It's like, why oh, are you crush on this person? That person? Me. That's my dream situation. Yes. Oh, you're trying to... What? You? Yeah. If I have a crush on someone and they're in front of me and they're trying to guess who it is, I, I think I would feel so excited. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Uh, I don't know. Imagine if... I'd be taken aback, actually. Imagine if you're... You know, you know, she was at the bar with you and then she asked you, do you have a crush? And you're like, yeah. And she's like, can I guess who it is? <laughs> Isn't that such an exciting situation? I think it's interesting. It's hot. It's interesting, but I don't... But, but normally, I don't think I would have a crush without that person knowing. Generally, la. People who I like know I like them one, la. Who didn't know that you like them? Anybody knew that you didn't like them? Uh, anybody knew that I liked them? Anybody didn't know that you liked them? I think I would just straight up tell her. I mean, I won't tell her. I would do things to make it known. Oh, will you ask her, do you have a crush? No, because by the, <laughs> first of all, by the time we'll be 30. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no, big, ain't no fucker in their 30s gonna be like, do you have a crush? <laughs> no. That ain't gonna happen. That's true. <laughs> Where did we stop? Um, um, okay, I thought she was. Uh, uh, it requires over the month. Uh, 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 the rest. Okay, the rest of the conversation goes with them trying to guess who I was. It was really funny for me because my crush was trying to guess who my crush was. I was smiling a lot and I think my face was blushing a little. Thankfully, the only information I gave out was that my crush was from our class. I only started liking them this year and that their ethnicity was Chinese. Shelly's ethnicity. Shelly told me to be brave and go for it. Little did she know. Shelly! <laughs> Shelly, you dumbass! <laughs> okay! Shelly, I like you! <laughs> That's damn fucking hilarious. The reason why I didn't tell her about my crush on her was because, number one, I'm a pembimbing rakan sebaya PRS at my school, so I'm scared I might get kicked out for being a lesbian. Oh my god. Number two, I'm pretty sure she's straight because she mentioned once again about not wanting to date Malay guys because she doesn't want to have a lot of kids. Honestly, pretty racist. So you like racist, huh? You like racist straight women. (laughs) Which means she might want to have kids. Which means she's most likely straight. That's the only proof I have, so I decay lah. Maybe she's bi. Perhaps. Maybe you can, you know, just... Adopt? Love it. Not adopt, I was gonna say you can... Impregnate like, her? No, you, I was gonna say that you can make her question her sexuality a little bit. You know, a lot of people are fluid these days. I feel like I am, we are going to the Defending Red Flags competition. <laughs> oh my god! A lot of people are a little bit fluid these days, so perhaps... Try, but with consent, with con- you know what this is really bad. Sexuality advice? is a spectrum. Ah, uh, this is really bad <laughs> advice. Don't take this advice. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't just, just ignore what I said. Um, perhaps move on. Okay. Number three, we wouldn't be compatible anyways. Our values don't doesn't seem to align. Yeah, so perhaps just move on. Um, the situation does not make the situation made me contemplate if I should act on my romantic feelings towards the same gender just for the fun of it. I think it'd be pretty exciting and fun. But I'll most likely be, it'll most likely badly affect my studies, emotional state and everything else. Then don't do it. You have your answer. I'm thinking that I should not ruin my life for just a few minutes of fun, correct? I always thought that I'll just get through high school and go to university and then I can start dating women. Actually, that is how it should be because I didn't date women until I was in doing my degree. Hey, actually, to be honest with you, right, I think it's a lot better to start dating when you're doing degree. I don't know why, but I feel like high school, when you're studying, is a lot worse, in my opinion. Because I feel like high school, like your schedule is a lot more cramped. 
Mm. Degree, I feel like there's a bit more flexibility to choose your classes. Mm -hmm. And high school is more like they will force you to learn everything and you have yeah, to yeah, yeah. achieve so much. So All I think right. better you start dating women in your degree. Yeah. Not us <laughs> suggesting, but it's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think like I didn't have that much time until I was in degree. If I started dating women when I'm sitting for SBM, I'm going to be mentally ill. Yeah, no. Just saying. And you're going to fail your SBM, nah, so don't yeah. do it, nah, okay? By the way, can you guys maybe do a video about childhood crushes and first loves? I think it might be pretty wholesome and refreshing. Or maybe not. Maybe it's traumatic. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. Goodbye. Hey, we kind of did that though. When? I don't know. I was talking about the girl that I asked out in the retail shop. That's not childhood crushes. That's how, not how the fuck do I remember my childhood crush? I don't have any childhood crushes. Yeah, same. I think my I childhood mean, crush was Taylor Lautner. Yeah, and Tae Young. My kindergarten crush, I don't remember their names anymore. Your kindergarten crush was your teacher who stared at you from the hallway. I didn't say I had a crush on her, I just said you that- You said you liked it! I- yes, I liked it! But it doesn't mean I had a crush on her. Yeah. Just saying. So guys, I don't think- <laughs> That's why we're not making that video. <laughs> yeah, it will be a little bit- Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, I think you should just move on. You should just- You should just move on. Date in degree, don't fill your SPM. Forget about Shelly. Shelly's a racist straight woman. Yeah. Don't date racist straight women here. No. Just just move on. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Don't I, take Shelly's advice, don't go for it. Yeah, don't go for it. Mm, mm. I would I would say just not bother. Yeah, I would say no, don't bother also. But anyway guys, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for watching guys. Um yeah, that's the end of the episode. So basically, this episode, nobody's getting bitches lah. No, yeah, nobody getting nope. bitches. No, they get bitches lah, but the bitches, they're not having the no no kissing. Um, Zero action. Death. Yeah, people are. Buy, buy me, us coffee. Buy us coffee. Buy me a coffee. Wait, this one is uh, I will buy me a coffee. Also, we managed to read until July-ish. Okay, that's pretty First good. First of July. Buy us coffee, yeah, guys. Two months, yeah, we're two months late, so that's okay. <laughs> It's fine, we're two months late. Actually, yeah, uh, uh, uh. they have been a uh, quite recent. Um, oh shit! Oh my god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh, oh god! There's a lot of things. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! It's a part three. Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Oh. Hey, not bad. I got off. You all submit again, uh. Okay. okay anyway, thanks. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Good bye. Night, uh, bye. Good night. Okay, I'm gonna put these to